All right, so for today's lesson, as we're drawing to the second to last video in this course, I wanted to cover some of the basics or two of the basic algorithms for sorting sets of data. So today is going to be probably one of the most basic sorting techniques. It's probably the sorting technique which is most closely based on how people given a set of data or a, just a list of data sort things. And that concept is the selection sort. So thanks to Wikipedia, there is a lovely GIF here which demonstrates the basics of the selection sort. So we're going to look at how this works. So the selection sort works by going through a set of data, in our case an array, and for each element it starts at the beginning and then moves through to the end trying to find the smallest set of data. This is assuming you're sorting it from least to greatest. Then, then once it's found the smallest set of data, it swaps those two sets of data. So as you watch, it finds the smallest, which is in blue, and swaps them. So here's zero. Uh, so it finds zero, which is the smallest, and then it swaps it. Then it moves on to the next element and starts counting down from that, trying to find the smallest, and then swaps it, moves down to the next, finds the next smallest, swaps it. And it keeps doing that over and over again until it reaches the end of the array, and then the data set is sorted. So it's a fairly straightforward sorting technique. So to implement that, I have here already set up an array of data. This is 10 elements, and I've got some code to print out the unsorted data. Now, in terms of sorting, without getting too far into the mathy analysis bit of sorting and, uh, programs and algorithms, this is the worst data set for a sorting algorithm because it starts sorted in the reverse order. The best um, starting set of data for any sort of algorithm would be if the data set was already in sorted order, which sort of makes an intuitive sense. It's going to take you longest to sort data which is the most confused, which is completely backwards. Although, granted, for you and I, as human beings, we'd be able to recognize the pattern just by looking at this, that it's already in reverse order, and we could switch it back. But computers can't do that, so they have to look at it one element at a time. So this is the worst set of data. So it makes it nice and easy to test. So I'm going to show you guys how to write this, the basic implementation of this, and explain to you line by line and command by command how it works and what's doing what. So. To start with, we have to step through every element in the array. So I'm going to start with the for loop for int i equals 0. i is less than 10, i plus plus, because this is an array of 10 elements. Then I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to create int smallest, which is going to hold the smallest value that we find when stepping through the array. So if I look. If I go back to the GIF, you can see that it. we should start by setting the initial smallest value to the value we already start looking at, because if that's already the smallest, it's just going to get switched with itself. So as you can see, 2 there didn't get switched with anything. It got switched with itself, essentially. So what I'm going to do is go back to this. So int smallest is going to equal the array at i, so the one we're com the value we're starting with, and then I'm going to create another value called smallest index. Oh, turn my caps lock over, which is going to equal i, and that's going to hold the index of the smallest value we find. That's going to come into play later when we have to swap the two elements, and we want to know exactly where in the array that was. We can't just say swap it with this value with the smallest value because we don't know where that is. We have to say where that is. So we give it the smallest index variable. Now we step through the array. I'm going to create another for loop. For int, this time I'm going to create an index m. And it's going to start counting from i. So we step through the array for every element. And then we start at the element and then move forward from it. 
So when this resets, we start from zero and then we count all the way down. Then we move up to the next value and then we count all the way down. Move up again. So it's two for loops, one nested within another. So for int m i equal or m equals i, m is less than ten. So we're still stepping through every value in the array, just starting from where we started. M plus plus. Now we have to know if we found the smallest value. So if the array at m is less than the smallest value we think we have, we have to update it. So smallest now becomes array now becomes the array at m, and the smallest index becomes m. So what this is making sure of is that every time we step through, we're going to compare to see if this value is smaller than the value we think is the smallest. And if it is, then we have to update it because it's no longer the smallest value. We now have found a new smaller value. Then once we've gone through all the elements starting from i, we have now found our smallest value and its smallest index, so we have to now do the swap. Now, I've included the C standard lib library. I'm going to zoom in. I keep forgetting to do that. So there is a command in the C standard lib called swap. And that lets us swap two elements. So we're going to swap the array at i, which is the array, which is our starting value, our starting index in the array. And I'm going to swap that with array dot at smallest index. So this swaps this value, the value we start counting with, with whatever we find is the smallest. And we keep doing that over and over again until we've stepped through every value in the array. So now, if we were to run this, I'm just going to copy this output. There we go. Clean that up. And I'm going to run this. You can see we start out with 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And what we end up with is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there you have it. That is how you write a selection sort, or that's how you implement a selection sort. So I hope that made sense. It's a fairly straightforward algorithm to do this. You can step through it line by line with the debugger. And I find that watching the Wikipedia GIFs over and over again really helps. Uh, you can do a little freeze frame if you click the image and pull. So if you watch this, you start to get a feel for how the algorithm works. And then watch this bit again before I do the coding. And it should make more and more sense if it didn't make sense from the start. It's a fairly simple, like I said, it's a fairly simple sorting algorithm that doesn't rely on any complex problem solving technique. It just relies on moving through the array, finding something that's smaller than the starting, and swapping them. So it's, it's essentially sorting it number by number. And so that is it for this video. I will see you all again next time in our last video for this course for a slightly more advanced, well I say slightly more advanced, a lot more of an advanced sorting technique which is going to look at recursion as a problem solving technique.